We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Two very uncommon species in the reptile trade. These are viper bellas, and they're a breeding pair. This one right here, his name is Foot. He's the male. I just like derpy names. I thought it'd be cute. And then this one is Bop Bop, and she's my female. And what you might notice is that they're both very different looking, even though they're the same species. And that's a term in the reptile community called polymorphism. And this is about the max size for females. Females are usually uh, a bit larger. They have to have some room to carry those babies. Males get to stay a little bit smaller, as you can see. And they're about full grown right now. It's a little bit squirmy. Uh, one thing I want to point out, though, is that they have very keeled scales. What I mean by that is they're very rough in nature. And that's because a lot of their diet comes from the slippery things they eat. They're found in water most of the time, out in the wild. So they need some really rough scales to keep a grip of that fish. Or amphibian, they'll also eat frogs. They're also known to eat lizards. Um, but in captivity, I don't really have easy access to those kinds of things, so they feed pretty readily on frozen thawed mice or live mice. Some people feed live. So that's foot and bop bop. They're both very sweet. And they're not very common in the pet trade, mainly because a lot of them come from the wild. and. Uh, the thing about having wild snakes in captivity is that you bring risks of having parasites and uh, the longevity of the snake is put at risk as well. Um, but once they're well, well established in captivity, um, they can breed and that's what I'm actually trying to do here. And hopefully with my help I can get a good uh, captive bred established uh, specimens uh, here in Georgia. So the next I'm going to show you is a Madagascan hissing cockroach. As the name suggests, they are from Madagascar. I'll come around and give us a close. they do that is they actually force air out of these little sides of their bodies called uh, spiracles. And it's an audible warning for predators to say, hey, back off. I don't like what you're doing. In Madagascar, uh, the native people there will actually use them as food very often. Um, in captivity, though, they're just cool pets. You know, they'll eat just about anything. Um, I've got a little blackberry that she ate for me yesterday. Um, I have a larger enclosure that I like to keep her in at home. <laughs> but like I said at the end, I'll go and come up here and can play with them if you want. Um, so this girl right here is probably going to be one of my favorites, even though you're not supposed to have favorites of your children. But this is Mimosa. And she is a yellow anaconda. She's a small one. She's not fully grown. She's a little angry with me. She can go, but she's fine. So yellow anacondas are one species of the four species of anaconda in the world. Yellow anacondas are the smallest. They only get about 10 feet max, whereas green anacondas get about uh, 15 to 20, they can get very large. Anacondas are the heaviest species of snake. Um, but like I said, yellows get a lot smaller. And with greens, you can definitely tell there's, you know, green colors in them. And yellows have a little bit more yellow. And in the wild, they're known as water boas. They are a type of boa. And they have specialized scales that are very, uh, I guess, uh, water dynamic. They're very smooth, which allows them to have less drag when they're swimming in the water. They also have eyes that are very closely positioned to their nose on the top of their heads there, and that allows them to keep a lot of their bodies submerged underwater. 
but they can still look out just over the tip of the, of the, of the surface. Uh, and the wild will also eat pretty much anything they can overpower. They've been known to eat turtles and uh, capybara, the world's largest rodent. They eat those as well. Other reptiles they can take down no problem. Fish, uh, frogs, really just anything they can overpower. Um, now all snakes are carnivorous, so there really isn't any plant-based diet for your pet snake. So that's the part of about, about keeping them, I guess, is that you have to have a strong heart to be able to feed something alive to your pet for the sake of keeping it alive as well. So that's Mimosa. Y'all can pet her in a second. Last but not least is the star child. This is Buddy. And Buddy is an Argentine black and white tabby lizard. The name suggests they're from Argentina. And what's cool about this girl in particular is that she's actually a Florida caught native. Now what that means is that um, in Florida they're invasive species. So they're not supposed to be there. They were introduced probably back in the 70s through the 90s as pets that were just let go. They didn't want uh, to take on the responsibility of owning such a large lizard. Um, now that is part of the issue with a lot of the invasive species in Florida, but um, with reptiles, it's actually uh, the main cause of, of them being invasive there is because of Hurricane Andrew. Now when that happened, there was tons of breeding facilities in Florida that got demolished, spreading tons of different kinds of species of reptiles all throughout the state. And that established colony then grew to become a very large problem for Florida. So when I got her at a reptile expo in, uh, at the North Gwinnett County Fairgrounds, um, she was only about this big. I knew what I was getting into. I always wanted to have a tape lizard. Um, but she ended up having some uh, feeding issues. But uh, come on. Um, but I noticed that she was starting to eat some of her cypress mulch, and it's really good for keeping moisture, so I like to use cypress mulch. And she couldn't pass it out. I don't know why she was eating it, but she just decided to. It thought it was amazing. I don't know. But we ended up taking her to the veterinary hospital, and that's when we found out that she actually has a microchip in this back right leg here. And if you kind of feel around, you can feel it. It's in there. And uh, that's how I came to the conclusion that she's a Florida caught because what a lot of breeders will do is that they'll find these and then they'll chip them and then in case they're ever put back in the wild, then they can trace that number in the microchip back to their original owner to find them or do whatever they, they want with them. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I've never had a microchipped pet before, so this is, this is a first for me and she's really sweet. I'll bring her around so y'all can feel her. Um, Tegus are also fossorial, which means they spend a lot of time on the ground. So she has these very special scales. What do they feel like? Different for sure. Yeah. Beads. Beads? Yeah, that's what a lot of people say is beads. So what that allows them to do is uh, take off any debris that's on their bodies while they're digging around and they're underground. And that beaded texture kind of helps just things fall off so that the dirt isn't sticking to them all the time. It's like beads, huh? <laughs> and then another thing I want to point out about her, as well as the other snakes, is this tongue right here. And what a lot of people might know about that is that they use it for smelling. And so how that works is that they'll stick out their tongue and then they have a left or a right fork. And then they'll bring it back in and they'll stick it to the roof of their mouth. And on the roof of their mouth there's an organ called the Jacobson's organ. And that allows them to interpret whether a particular scent particle is coming from the left or it's coming from the right. And that helps them kind of pinpoint where a smell is coming from. I think she smells mimosa in there. She's getting curious. That's another thing about tabby lizards is that they're curious. They're very smart. They're very... Intriguing lizards, I would compare her to a two-year-old. She's always getting into trouble. Uh, she knows what size of her cage opens. So if she wants to be out, she'll let me know. She'll just non-stop scratch, 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 wanting to be let out. Um, now the cool thing about Tegus is that they're omnivorous. And she will really eat just about anything I offer to her. So if I can, I'll 
hand, you are going to eat this blackberry. And I meant to bring some more food so y'all can see her eat. She loves meat. So I'll just put that right there. Related to them, they are very closely. Uh, they they look a lot alike. They have a lot of the same. Uh, 